Hey folks, Ed here. Welcome to the second episode of my vlog color grading series. Today we're going to be working in Resolve and we're going to be looking at grading a shot from a recent video uh, called Snow Day. It'll be linked somewhere here or in the description down below. Now the main principle of this tutorial is to sort of introduce the concept of knowing where you're going. So having an end result in mind and then sort of following your grading process and building out your node structure in order to achieve that. In this case, we're taking footage shot outside on a Lumix S5 uh, during a sort of cold, wintry, snowy day. And we really want to emphasize and push that sort of cold, grungy look uh, through the process of color grading. So we're going to be adding uh, some blue to the image, mostly pushing blue into the highlights. We're also going to be sort of pulling the exposure down a little bit. And to really sell that look, we're going to be protecting the skin tone from all of that at the same time, which will really help highlight the subject and provide some really nice color contrast between the warmer tones of the skin tone and obviously the blue in the rest of the image. I'm going to step you through what I did to achieve the look on my individual shot, but it doesn't really matter if you're not following along to every single tweak or change I make. What is important, I think, are the principles here, the node structure, what we're doing to build the look. So you can then take that away and apply it to your own footage and your own projects and ultimately experiment with it and transform it into something else. Obviously, if you do want to grade along at home, uh, these clips will be made available as always for a small fee on my website, link in the description down below. So let's jump into Resolve now and get on with the tutorial. Okay, so this is the original graded image. Um, you can see that the node structure looks fairly complicated, but it's not really. There's, you know, your basic correction process going in, in these two nodes. There's some halation and grain effects, basically, that happen first. And I'll explain why I've added them first in a minute. Then we just have a skin tone qualification um, and a sort of a creative node here, which is what's push pushing that blue into the image. Uh, and then basically what we do here is through the use of a layer node, we basically just take that skin tone qualification and we layer it over that blue creative treatment. And what that does, it just allows us to um, bring back that skin tone and protect it a little bit. And then through the use of this key tab, we can use the gain here to sort of blend the skin tone back into the image. So we can push a bit of that blue in from the original grade uh, back into the skin tone if we want uh, and that helps sort of just blend that, that skin tone back into the look uh, and then we've added the glow that's optional don't really need it. it just sort of adds a bit more boost to the image uh, we've got a film curve wrapping things up uh, and that just adds our contrast you can see it down here and then we use one of um, da Vinci's built-in uh, film LUTs here. We're using the Rec. 709 Kodak uh, 2383D55 and that comes after a, a color space transform. Basically the color space transform is pulling our original log footage um, into a Rec. 709 space. So it's a bit like applying a Rec. 709 LUT. But in this case we're um, changing the output gamma to Cineon film log. And that just prepares the image for the application of this filmlet that we're overlaying. And what we get from that filmlet is just basically a bit of crunch and uh, effects on colors and saturation and contrast and stuff like that. And then the, the creative color treatment um, comes from this node here. And then if we also look, hopefully you can see it on YouTube, we've got quite a funky sort of saturated grain that's been applied to the image. Um, the reason why I've added it before everything else is because I wanted the grain to be affected by everything we do to the image rather than just sort of layering it over the top of everything at the end. And that's because I feel sometimes by doing that, you can give your grain a bit more of a 3D uh, texture and it is manipulated and push and pull and modulated in the same way that the rest of the image is uh, when you're grading it. So the effect of that is that you get this sort of grain that also takes on the various characteristics of the corrections and color grades that you've done on your image. And then the halation, again, it's optional, but I find it does just sort of boost highlights a little bit and adds a little bit of punch and warmth to skin tones. So here's our log footage. We're going to go along and we're going to grade it uh, so you can follow along and see what I do. 
A little note is we may not end up at the exact same final result. Um, that's just because uh, for the interest of time, I'm just gonna be doing it as I go along. Um, I'm not gonna be copying over the exact settings. So that might mean that there'll be a few subtle differences here and there along the chain. That's okay. The, the important thing here is, is to sort of introduce the technique and the workflow and what we're doing. The point of this tutorial is to introduce different workflows and different ways of following through with an idea and executing it in the grade. So in this instance, we have an idea of um, pushing a lot of blue into the image, making it darker and grungier. And yeah, just to sort of create this sort of blue wintry cold feel uh, and starting with that intention and um, you know, getting to that end result, having the idea first and then knowing how to execute that idea is really important. So you can pause the video here uh, and create this node structure um, and then label it. And then I'll show you how I add all the, the various effects and stages. Uh, if you wanna add these nodes here, uh, you would just add one serial node and then you'd right click on that. Uh, and then you go to add node, add layer, and then that should drop another layer here and this mixer thing here. And then all you do is when you do your skin tone qualification, you just connect it to this node with this blue uh, box to blue arrow. Let's have a go grading this log image um, with this workflow. So we're gonna go, first we're gonna add our color space transform. We're gonna add that there. So this was shot on a Panasonic camera. It was the Panasonic S5. So we would, input those values there. We want to convert the output color space to a Rec 709 color space, because that's what we're delivering in. And then we're gonna um, put the Cineon film log here, uh, and then that converts us into the Cineon film log gamma on here. I'm just gonna right click, and then we're gonna go to LUT, and then we are gonna go down to film looks, and here, under the Rec 709, again, you can experiment using your own ones. There's two uh, film LUTs here, and these are different degrees of uh, warmth or coldness. So we're gonna select the Kodak 2383D55, which is the warmest variant of this film stock. So next we're gonna go into our primaries and just do a bit of balancing. So you would also, if you had any white balance, uh, adjustments. This is where you want to get your image sort of looking fairly balanced, um, which it sort of already is. Um, so we'd probably just bring up those shadows a little bit. Just want to protect that low end because we will be adding the S curve in, which will add the contrast. So primaries, bring the gamma down a little bit. And then uh, also we're just going to Bring this gain down a little bit, about there. On the offset, I'm just gonna bring this down, the blue down a little bit. It's maybe a slight magenta -y tinge to the image. Uh, and then the green just a little bit. And then the red. About there. Then we're just gonna add a bit more contrast in, maybe 1.1. Okay, so that's looking good. So we're almost there. Um, the next steps are basically adding in these effects uh, and then we'll go on to do our final sort of creative grade of the image. So under halation, um, I'm gonna add some halation in. So basically this is sort of like a film effect um, plugin or effect. Um, and it sort of just emulates a quality of film. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but it's a character of certain film and the way it's exposed in the chemical process that leads to these sort of red fringing or red glows around certain highlights. I find this can sometimes be used just to give a bit of a boost to certain highlights or warm highlights in the image. Um, so I'm just gonna dial the settings in I used originally. So uh, because we're in the Panasonic, V gamut color space. Again, it's a shot in V-Log on the Lumix S5. We just make sure you've got the right camera setting there. It will help. Um, and then I guess what I tend to do here is put something really extreme in and then just 
dial it all the way back on the blend. Um, I kind of, yeah, I don't know if that's just what I find easier to do is get something crazy and then just like dial a few percent of it in to get a very subtle effect. There's probably much more sensible ways to do it by actually just dialing in the exact effect you want, but this is just the weird way that I work. Again, this is just how I work. You might do it differently. So I'm gonna dial in the settings more or less that I used before. So I sort of brought the threshold down. Threshold is sort of the thing, the point in the image that this effect is applied. So if it's applied to all of the image or none of the image. So um, we are gonna sort of drop the threshold down from the default to about 0.83 and then normalization uh, to around five, nine and then film saturation level to about 273. And then in here, I'm going to bring down the strength to about 0.312, the gamma to 1.16, and then saturation leave at one, and then the spread, we are just gonna boost that a little bit to 0.8. So you see we're getting this sort of like warm fringy effect. This is not really how um, halation sort of looks in real life. Um, so we are sort of mutating this effect a little bit for our purposes. And then uh, under global adjustments, I'm just gonna bring reduce highlights down to 259. Uh, leave the aspect ratio to one and then detail loss, just increase that a little bit. Around there will do. And then that's such a sort of strong, funky uh, effect that I then just roll it all the way back to around 0 0.07, about there. So that's what it's like off. So just, I don't know, it adds like a bit of life to the skin tone, I would say, a bit of like a very subtle warmth to it. Uh, warm fuzziness that I quite like and sort of put, pumps something into the sort of the highlights. Um, uh, and then after that, we're gonna add the grain. So as I said, I've decided to add the grain first because I wanna sort of distort the grain a little bit by overlaying and pushing the grain along with the rest of the image. You know, a little bit how when you're filming something that's been shot on film and then you correct it in post digitally, you would be doing that to the film grain as well. So you can experiment about where you add grain. If you are adding noise reduction here, which we're not in this case, just make sure the noise reduction comes before that grain node because obviously you don't want the noise reduction to um, reduce the effect of the grain or sort of degrade your image. Again, experiment with the settings, see what you like here, but I like 16 millimeter film uh, and then I sort of use that as a base point and then uh, we'll tend to sort of mess around with it there. I just play around with the settings and get stuff looking roughly where I like it. Grain size, uh, so 60 millimeters, slightly bigger grain size. So I would probably probably just bring it down a bit. Probably bring the strength down a little bit. Uh, then I would bring the softness down a little bit. So that just sharpens it a tiny bit. Those are fairly, mostly fairly subtle changes, but I whacked the saturation all the way up. And that just gives the, the grain a bit of color. If we zoom in on this image, I don't know if you can see it. The grain has this sort of nice, if you can see there, if I pull that back, um, you can opt by having slightly colorful grain or a slightly sort of monochromatic grain. I quite like the colorful one in um, in this particular instance. It just added a bit more noise and texture to the image, especially if we're adding that blue. So that's kind of like the balanced image. We've added in some of the effects now. The next bit and sort of final bit is to get on to the creative element. So pushing blue into the image. So the first part of this, you can sort of do it in two ways, but the first part I would usually do is qualify the skin tone because we're gonna um, drape it over the creative color grade. So what I do is I go to picker here and I will normally just sort of, you know, wipe that over the face skin tone a little bit. Then we go up here. Uh, and then this shows us what we've qualified. I personally would go in and tidy up the qualification. Um, I will do it quickly now, it might not be perfect, but if you've got the time, obviously, um, the cleaner the qualification, the less of the other parts of the image that you don't want to affect will be pulled into it. So, 
I'm not sure we've got that skin tone in. Okay, so after you've got your qualification and you're sort of happy with it, just pump, crank that denoise up, um, maybe the blur radius a little bit, and that will just soften out the selection and make sure you don't introduce any sort of weird noise or artifacting. So I'm going to click that off. This is the point where you would also do a bit of correction. Um, so this correction will probably happen in two steps uh, because we're sort of the the skin tone that we want is also going to be slightly responsive to this grade uh, it will be a sort of back and forth process normally so what i would probably do next is then adjust and go into your creative um, grade treatment but just before i do that i would connect that skin tone uh, qualification node to the skin tone layer here so what that allows us to do now is everything that isn't that skin tone will be affected by this top creative layer, which is the really cool, clever bit about this workflow. So if you push a load of blue into it, if you didn't have that second layer on and turn this off, uh, basically it would all be blue. So in this case, all we've done in this node is select a skin tone. So it's basically saying, hey, just layer that skin tone on top and you get this. So obviously that's way too extreme. Okay, so in the creative grade, I think I sort of just reduced the contrast of the background image, and then we added the blue in, obviously. So I think it was around there. Just adding a subtle bit of blue into the low end of the image, and then boosting the gamma a little bit. And then we boost, I think we just pump the gain up a little bit, and then we just brought, sort of pulled the whole thing down. So it was about there. Uh, pulled the whole of that offset down so you can see we've just sort of you've already made the background now a bit darker which sort of adds to that cold effect that cold feeling as well as just putting a tiny bit of blue in the lift um, and we can see that that's starting to sort of introduce that look that we're going for so then we're going to go into the log wheels here, and this is where we'll push most of the blue in. In the highlights, I think I added a bit of red, some green, and then quite a lot of blue. And then the key to this is, uh, because the highlights, uh, what we're doing here is sort of affecting part of the image where we haven't really got much information in, i.e. up here, we're going to bring the high range down. And that's basically saying treat a lower part of this image as the highlights so um, bring it all the way down as you see as we do that we get all that blue starting to enter the image so I'm going to go for around here um, and then we are going to do the skin tone uh, correction um, so I might also go back in here and sort of get that image a little bit darker. So I just want to separate the background a little bit more from the skin tone. Let's bring the gain down. Again, this is personal preference. Do however you like. Then back in the skin tone qualification. So this skin tone now just looks really unnatural. It doesn't really suit this image. We're going to push maybe a bit of green in the gamma. Um, as well as the tint. Uh, and then then we just need to sort of pull it down so it sort of fits in this image. So I'm just going to pull the gain down on that skin tone. And then maybe just bring the offset down to around 20, 22, somewhere around there. 22, 20. So without, move on. So we sort of corrected it and it's sort of, the skin tone's sort of living in this world of the grade now. The image is looking good, but it's looking maybe a little bit flat uh, and sort of lacking contrast and life. So this is when I would probably add in the film curve uh, just to sort of boost everything. I'm just going to copy it over from the original one in the interest of time. Uh, but you can see one, two, three, four, five, six points. So we're going to add that in there. Boom, that adds loads of punch to the image. And then the final part is sort of just finessing stuff because obviously that film curve is just way too aggressive so you can either adjust uh, some of that film curve or you can go back to your primaries and maybe add some lift there and this is where it's all sort of finessing 
We're also going to go into the skin tone layer here and just going, we're going to blend that in. So this is basically, basically just making this layer a little bit more transparent. So we're going to bring that down to about 0.66. Um, but we're not quite there yet. That skin tone is a little bit, still not quite looking good. So I'm going to increase the saturation of the skin tone, maybe to around there. And then just basically make adjustments until I'm sort of happy with it. Sort of getting there. Maybe we just take a little bit of blue out. Slightly less harsh. We'll push it slightly more towards the green end. On the skin tones, maybe mess around with the gamma. Something around there. And then maybe that's looking a bit too saturated now. So I'm going to just roll the saturation back. And that's not looking too bad. Um, you know, we've got the blue, we've got the nice skin tone coming through. Again, if you want the skin tone to be sort of more in line with the blue grade, you can just reduce that gain down. You know, so if we take it all the way down, you can see that skin tone gets paler and paler because we're getting more of the original blue in it. But the part part of what sort of makes the subject here stand out is the contrast color contrast of the skin tone against the blue. So you know the classic teal and orange look. Um that's what kind of gives it a bit of pop. So almost getting there. Um you know, you might want to adjust the contrast curve a little bit. And then obviously just be careful not to crush too much for your blacks or go below the safe levels or above the safe levels. So the final thing that I would do is I would add the glow effect here after the creative treatment and that just sort of helps emulate the use of something like a ProMist filter, I guess, uh, sort of just bloom stuff a little bit. And you can obviously, you know, dial in how much you want to uh, use, uh, but roughly it sort of takes highlights and blooms them and hazes them a little bit. So again, it just adds to this idea of degrading the image and giving this sort of slight film look. So the settings I used originally were, I think I brought the shine threshold right down and spread left that where it is. As you can see, this is uh, again, a very strong effect, which will pull back. I will then go to add as soft light. Uh, so it's just a little bit more subtle, um, still a bit too strong. So I will pull back the opacity to around there. And then also just reduce it right down to around about there. So you can see it's a subtle effect. And that's pretty much it, to be honest. I know this has been quite long and rambly. And the purpose of this tutorial is not to sort of hold your hand all the way through and give you the exact settings. It is to show you the process that I would normally go through, albeit condensed into as, as small a time as possible. You know, I would probably be spending an hour messing around, going back and forth between settings and dialing stuff in until I get the image uh, looking here, which is why it's always quite difficult to then go back and unpick it and teach it as a tutorial. So all along the way in this node structure are where you tweak and dial in and modify this look. So, you know, decide you don't want blue in it, then you just sort of, uh, you reset that creative node and you can push warmth into it. Or again, it's up to you, this is just, uh, a workflow that is flexible and adaptable uh, and gives you the ability to pump in whatever you want whilst maintaining your skin tone, which is what sort of allows you to sort of sell this quite extreme blueness in the background because there are these sort of anchor points in the image. Again, uh, you choose how much of that skin tone you want to blend back into the image. Um, that's completely up to you. If you want something, you know, super poppy, uh, you could go something crazy like that and have 100% of that original skin tone in. I sort of would say, you know, somewhere along the middle way of 0.5 to 0.6 is probably pretty good. Best of both worlds. 
So thanks for checking this out. I hope you found it useful. I hope it wasn't too rambly. Uh, don't worry if you didn't follow along with every single change. I think, as I mentioned earlier, the core principles here what are really important, the node structure and stuff like that. That's what's gonna matter when you apply it to your own footage. But apart from that, if you enjoyed this video, please consider uh, giving me a like or subscribing to the channel. And if you don't want to miss future episodes of this color grading series, then just hit that bell icon uh, and then you won't miss out on uh, future episodes when they drop. But as always, thanks for watching and until next time, see ya.